The night changed my life. As William James says, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their altitude of minds. In 1980, I graduated from law school and thought I'd be a lawyer for the rest of my life. After all, that's what I've wanted to do since my early teenage years. At first, everything went according to plan. After lots of studying that summer, I passed the bar examination and was admitted to practice law in New York. My personal life was also on the answer. In early 1981, I married Dolores, a law school classmate. I was on my way to much success and happiness, or so I thought. But after practicing law for a few years, I realized I wasn't happy at all. Sure, there were some things I liked about being a lawyer. I enjoyed helping people resolve their disputes, especially when I could save them from the agony of lengthy court proceedings. Yet, there were so many things about being an attorney that I disliked, and that just seemed to drain the life out of me. Mounds and mounds of tedious paperwork and motions to be filed, constant delays and postponements. It was not uncommon for a trial to be postponed ten times. I dreaded going to work. I continued to grind out the work, but grew more and more dissatisfied as an attorney. I was frustrated and very depressed. To put it bluntly, I didn't like my life and saw no way that things were going to improve. Have you ever had a job where you dreaded going to work most days, where you felt the weight of the world on your shoulders each day? Well, that's how I felt. I was literally hunched over and in pain, both physically and emotionally. I looked much older than my years. I began to get headaches all the time, and my stomach was constantly churning. Fearing that I had some serious health problem, I saw some doctors, and they ordered a battery of tests. Every test came back with the same result. They couldn't find anything physically wrong with me. One of the doctors suggested that I take Maalox to calm my upset stomach. Spiritually, I was dead. Nothing in my life had much meaning. This day-to-day -day drudgery was also affecting my appearance. Although I was in my late twenties, I looked life I was forty. In the early part of 1985, shortly after I had turned thirty years old, I was burned out, and one particular evening, while sitting alone in my den, I knew that something had to change. Not knowing what to do, I simply said out loud, there's got to be more to my life than this. There's got to be more than this misery and unhappiness. Help comes from an unlikely source. Later that night, I was watching TV in the den. It was around 1 a.m., and my wife, Dolores, had already gone to bed, but I was feeling so down I couldn't sleep. I channel surfed, looking for something to occupy my time. I tuned into, of all things, an infomercial. Normally, I would have changed that channel in a fraction of a second, but for some reason, I listened. The product being peddled was called the Mental Bank and was endorsed by actress Florence Henderson of Brady Bunch fame. The Mental Bank was a home study course that explained how everything we achieve in life is based on our subconscious beliefs. I felt so desperate at that point that I decided to go for it. I pulled out my credit card and ordered the program. That night in my den was the turning point of my life. By the way, when I sheepishly told Dolores what I had done a day or two later, she was shocked. You did what? she asked in amazement. It's not that she objected to the purchase. It was just so out of character for me to buy something like that on impulse, and worse yet, from a TV infomercial. Several days later, the mental bank program arrived at my doorstep, and I was fascinated and excited to begin learning how our thoughts determine the quality of our lives. Prior to that time, I had never heard of these ideas. Unfortunately, they don't teach you this stuff in school. The mental bank program spurred me to seek out other motivational resources. I began to read books by Napoleon Hill, Og Mandino, Norman Vincent Peale, and Robert Schuller. I started reading the Bible on a regular basis. I eagerly listened to aspiring audio programs by Zig Ziglar, Earl Nightingale, Jim Rohn, Bob Proctor, and many others. I felt like a person who had wandered for days in the desert with a parched throat and then suddenly found a stream of water. Now, I can't tell you that everything in my life changed overnight because it didn't happen that way. But from the moment I began to change from a negative attitude to a positive attitude, I started to get significant results. I felt better, I had more energy, and I started to achieve goals that I would never have accomplished before. 
all because of a change in my attitude. I'm happy to report that when people now ask how old I am, and I say 57, they invariably reply, you look much younger. It's all in the attitude. As Dr. Norman Vincent Peale says, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. From lawyer to motivational speaker, I continued my self-study program in my spare time while I worked full-time as a lawyer. Positive thinking was helping my attitude at work, but I felt a passion for my hobby that I never felt for my work, and I dreamed about the day I could walk away from my job. In 1989, after four years of intensive research about attitude and motivational concepts, I agreed to present some adult education seminars in the evenings at a local high school. I was to be paid $30 for each two-hour class not the kind of money that lets you quit your day job. As I stood in front of the class to start my first seminar, I was petrified. My heart was pounding and I was sweating, but somehow I managed to muster the courage to just do it. The students loved the class and I got a real adrenaline rush from presenting the material that had revolutionized my own life and that had the power to do the same for others. Eventually, the speaking fees grew a little larger, and in 1990, I decided to phase out my law career over the next few years. This wasn't a simple decision. I had gone to four years of college and three years of law school to obtain my law degree. On top of that, I had spent ten years of my life as a practicing lawyer. When you have that much invested in your career, it's not so easy to walk away. Then, of course, there was the money issue. As a lawyer, I was on track to earn $100,000 in a few years, and I'd be earning that much and more for the rest of my professional career. Taking a stand. Although I was earning a little more income from my new hobby, I realized that I'd have startup expenses in launching my new enterprise. Fortunately, Dolores and I had saved some money over the years. To supplement my income, I began to sell a line of merchandise with my unique Attitude is Everything logo, but there was no way to avoid it. I'd have to take a huge financial step backward to start my new business, at least in the beginning. And yet, it was time to move on. I felt as if I was being pulled out of the legal profession and into my new career. Whenever I spoke to an audience or wrote a motivational essay, I was so invigorated and full of life. I knew that's where I belonged. So I made a gradual transition working four days a week as a lawyer, then three days a week, and then two days a week. Until, in 1992, I began working full-time as a motivational speaker and writer. Trust me, my mother wasn't thrilled when I told her that I was giving up the practice to flaw T speak about attitude. After all, it doesn't carry the prestige of saying my son is a lawyer. But these are issues you have to deal with when you take a stand in life. You have to face the fact that some people will disapprove of your decision. I also learned that you often have to let go of some things in your life and take a few steps backward before you can move forward in a new direction. Part of the price I had to pay was giving up the money, prestige, and security of my legal career. By the way, as it turned out, my mother became very supportive of my new career, especially when she saw that I was making progress and that I really enjoyed my work. Why am I telling you all this about my career transition? It's not to impress you with what I've done. Believe me, I've made plenty of blunders and mistakes along the way. I am sharing my story because I want you to know how drastically my life changed and how much better it got when I made a change in my attitude. Proof positive that indeed, attitude is everything. As it is said, a positive attitude is a person's passport to a better tomorrow. Speak, act. This is a series divided into three parts, and each part contains a series of lessons. In part one, success begins in the mind. We'll be focusing on the power of attitude and belief to shape your destiny. You'll learn how your success initially depends on the way you think. In part two, watch your words. We'll concentrate on the way that you speak, how your attitude is reflected in your words, and how positive language can help to propel you toward your goals. In part three, heaven helps those who act, will be over the final leg of our journey. Even if you think positively and speak positively, you won't achieve your dreams until you act. You can't sit back and learn. When you think, speak, and act in ways that support your success, 
you're firing on all cylinders and on the way to achieving phenomenal results in your life.